The silent majority is a long list of struggling people, young people. You can just imagine the young girl who goes to motor parks or the young boy who has to wake up as early as 4 a.m. to sell popcorn or ice cream on the streets where you have a lot of crazy drivers and vehicles and stuff. It's just um, a term for any child that is struggling with life, especially talented kids who are in poor communities. They are the silent majority. I belong to a group of artists. So we had a group exhibition in then the Nimbus Art Center, which is where I met Adolfo Sopara. And I took this topic, which was um, eradicating child abuse in Nigeria. For the first time, I showcased one, one or two paintings that actually expressed my feeling about the kids generally. So that was sort of the point that, you know, that got me um, inspired to do more. The one day I was at CCA, Center for Contemporary Art, somewhere in Yaba, I was just thinking, I was just, something just made, took my mind there. I said, okay, Makoko, I go to Makoko very often, you know? And okay, I'm like, I've stayed there, I've slept there, I you know, like my another home for me. This is Shalala, so we can actually do it there, you know? 2009, I just got a call out of the blues. And I said, Shalala, we have to do this in now. So I said, yes, let's go there. And then he took me to this community. The first time I, I, I went to Makoko, I was in shock because I, I couldn't really believe that that kind of community existed within Lagos State. There was a permanent stench in that environment. I couldn't breathe properly. They feed their children in this kind of environment where you have feces just floating by. The kids are washed in the water. Restaurant on water, you have <laughs> vegetable markets on water. I mean, you just need to visit this community. Photographers from all over the world have braved canoe rides on the Dredgy Lagoon to capture shots of Makoko, a community built on stilts that sprawls below Lagos' third mainland bridge. Yet few Makoko residents have ever seen their pictures. Makoko is as photogenic as it is poverty-stricken, and its residents have grown used to the intrusive lenses of strangers. You look at, you're driving by, you see this place, oh wow, on water, you take pictures from the top, it looks nice. What happens if you now go down? You now actually go down, you now take pictures, then another thing draws you further, closer to them, the individuals in it. They are very welcoming people, they are very happy people, you know, no matter how um, you want to look at it, however impoverished you might think they are. They are very um, happy people. Many, many clicks later, these uninvited visitors leave with images to be shared with other strangers. The population here in Makoku is over 200 and something thousand people living here. And imagine how many kids don't have the privilege of education here in this environment. Some people that have been in this environment, this community, and for 20 years they have not gone outside this community. There are people like that. And, um, and there are so many people like that, that's the majority. But they have not been empowered to say anything. So they are all silent. In order to give this silent majority a voice, Adolphus Okwara and Shola Otori decided to do something different. Empower these photographic subjects to take ownership of their images and help shape a narrative that cannot be told fully without their input. For me, it was, I was willing to say, okay, how, what do I do for these people? You can only give what you have, you know? It will cost me money to um, go and buy something I give to these people or go and pay some guy to come and teach them something else, you know? You can be a painter, you can be a photographer, you can still be a carpenter if you want. So it's just about giving them choices, you know. Give them something that would better their life. You know, like you can teach them how to fish instead of buying them fish, you know. 
And so eventually we went to the community head who, who is popularly known as the Bale. And we shared the idea with him and he was very, very, very happy with, you know, the fact that we wanted to kind of bring something back to his community. That was how we started the project. Adolphus and Shola started classes teaching the basic principles of photography, color and light. And thus was born the Silent Majority Project. The project started on February 16th, 2010. Two hours every Wednesday and Friday for it lasted up to you September. Each of the participants received a camera and was encouraged to go into the community and take photos of their own. The result is a photo project that gives a fresh perspective of life in Makoko, proving that there are so many untold stories, even in a place so tirelessly photographed. A lack of exposure and education had robbed these young people of the ability even to dream. For them, the idea that they too could wield a camera was empowering in itself. But that future was now within their grasp. This was a door to a whole new world of opportunity and nothing could stop them. My name is Mary Awajini. I'm 16 years old. We have five in our family. My mother sells fish. This is where my mom lives. <laughs> Photography, it teaches me how to, into, I mean, interact with people in my community and what is going on and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. If I go into photography now, I think something is going to change. I do dream about it that one day yeah, I'm going to be up there. Man. So that's it. The first time I was giving the camera to shoot, I just mess it up. Mess it up, shoot anything, it's not clear, whitewash. From there, I started uh, turning my camera, the ISO, the speed, and the aperture focus very well. And that's how I get this nice picture. Uh, I think I shoot this picture because of, I sat in front of my house, I was like thinking of, what to do. In fact, I'm, more, I'm hungry then. So like, I'm not going to eat. So I just saw the dog playing, they are playing. When there's something that I bring out my camera to, they just feel calm, they sat down. I was going to say to and this guy was looking at me like, what this guy is going to do? So much love the picture. It was a picture of um, domestic animals. So. A good image is what a thousand words. A good picture, one good picture. A thousand words. Imagine somebody saying a thousand words. Just keep talking, you know. <laughs> somebody must hear you eventually. <laughs> so, but um, on the other hand, it's also going to give them another means of livelihood. Because we started with a bigger class than the other than just like five people eventually, which I was very happy with, you know. Um, but the whole idea is that um, for those that made it to the end, it should be a knowledge that even if they don't use immediately, but sometime in their life, it will be like priceless, like, oh, wow, I learned this. And I try, I try to do this and still go back to it. But those who decide to take it for that now, um, the sky is not even limited at all. Really. Mm -hmm. 
One morning, I got a phone call about 10 from Noah, is a brother to the Ballet of Makaku, and he told me that Adolfos, Adolfos, that the government people are here and they're um, pulling down Makaku, they're pulling down the houses. The place they once called home has now been demolished by the Lagos State Government. Residents of Makoko say they were not only forcefully evicted, but one of their own, who was a chief in the community, was killed by a policeman. Well, the government can decide to shut down the whole of Makoko tomorrow and relocate, if they like, the entire population. Eventually, the kids may lose their bad place, but one thing that they can never lose is the skill that they have acquired from this project, the Silent Majority Project. And, and, and I must say that um, before now, these kids were the Silent Majority, but now they have a voice and they have a skill, which is very, very significant. Wherever they find themselves, it will keep them going. Now they can earn a living. Now they can speak with their own voice, whatever they want to let people know. With their birthplace marked for demolition and the future uncertain, life for these kids is probably much tougher than ever before. But they are no longer silent. Before they could not speak. Now they have a voice. And if one picture is louder than 10,000 words, we will continue to hear the voices of this silent majority for a very, very long time. La qualité fait la différence Les jaloux vont périr Et Kami Ogbe nambi non kwe wè wè ja Da yi hon mèm ogbe Wa ma ina non zoto e Ogbe nambi non kwe wè mi ka ja Lobo na fong o lo ta kwa je wè Ogbe nambi non kwe wè wè ja Da yi hon mèm ogbe Wa ma ina non zoto e Ogbe nambi non kwe wè mi ka ja Ekuye tonkoro 